heard the rumor about, uh, I don't want you to think that there's any maritable uh, problems with the Miller family, but uh, you've heard the rumor that uh, Gloria hasn't spoken to Van the last two weeks. She didn't want to interrupt him. <laughs> <laughs> she was complaining about retirement. She said that, uh, you know, they come home at night, they sit on the couch, and they just uh, drink wine in front of the fireplace. And she said to Van, you know, this is getting kind of boring. She said, you know, we ought to do something different. I said, well, what do you want to do different? She said, why don't we, like, sex in front of the fireplace? He said, what? She said, sex in front of the fireplace. And Van looked at Gloria, and he looked at the fireplace, and he looked at Gloria, and he looked at the fireplace, and he said, Gloria, why in God's name would you want to put steps in front of the fireplace? <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> yeah. We were playing the Kansas City Chiefs, and I happened to get back into the game and uh, try to keep pass and third down. And Van said, here's Eddie Rutkowski. He's back in the game. But don't worry, fans. Last week he had a concussion, but x-rays of Ed's head revealed nothing. So <laughs> I don't know how you meant that, Van. But, uh, <laughs> And he has been a legendary sports anchor at WIVB, where he recently retired. And, you know, I had the uh, unique privilege of working with Dan uh, in the broadcast booth. You know, great artists paint a picture by using color. Great broadcasters are able to paint a picture by using words. And Van had this unique ability to describe what was happening on the field so that you can visually see that in your mind. And he did it with a great sense of humor and great enthusiasm, and I don't realize, I, I don't think any of you realize that for you to be a broadcaster and to have that level of enthusiasm for three, three and a half or four hours uh, is almost impossible to do. And I was in the pre presence of a great with my days with uh, Van Miller. And uh, his lasting legacy to our community was acknowledged by his induction into the Buffalo Broadcasting Hall of Fame. He was known as the voice of the Buffalo Bills, and as far as I'm concerned, he will always be known as the voice of the Buffalo Bills. And at this time, we have something special to show you. Four man rush drops back in the pocket, sails it long, oh, oh, at the 10, at the 5, in for the touchdown! Throws down there is Reed at the 5, in for the touchdown! Andre Reed has scored! And now the Bills are back in this game! Protected and intercepted by Henry Jones at the 40, at the 30! Now, ladies and gentlemen, voice of the Buffalo Bills, Van Miller. He weighs the same he did in the eighth grade, for God's sake. You know why? Because he was raised a good Catholic boy. His dad and funded a low calorie communion wafer. Unbelievable. And now the bad news. Why the hell do I always get stuck, stuck speaking between two politicians? <laughs> <laughs> mayor Dole, the best mayor money can buy. <laughs> Ed Rutkowski, and Ed, thank you for whipping this crowd into a frenzy. <laughs> did a great job. But two politicians, and me in the middle, I could die like our Lord between two thieves. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's great.
great to come home and look out on that lake and a friend in Springfield. And this guy hates the Bills. And, and I think the Bills are going to make the playoffs this year. I honestly yeah. Yeah. This guy, this guy, he's, you know, he, he, he likes his friend. When you say, ah, the Bills won't even make the playoffs, and I'm getting tired of that guy. You know what they call 47 millionaires sitting around watching the Super Bowl? The Cleveland Browns. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Billy Graham and the Cleveland Browns have in common? They're the only people in the world that I know that can get 80,000 people get on their feet and say, oh my God. <laughs> You keep the Cleveland Browns out of your property, out of your yard, and up a gold post. <laughs> <laughs> you can walk between the Cleveland Browns and a dollar bill, an old fashioned dollar bill. I can still get four good quarters out of the dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think any time, I was driving out here, Gloria and I, this morning. And there was a dead possum lying on the side of the road. Obviously, it run into a Bridgestone uh, or Firestone tire, and it was lying there. And I thought, you know, that sort of reminds me of the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> the and the Cleveland Browns. You know, they both played dead at home and could kill down the road. <laughs> <laughs> are you leaving or are you going? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you left this last year. And, and when you came back in, I said, Could you hear, hear me out there? And, and, and uh, he said, No. I said, Well, we could hear you in here. <laughs> I want to do what you have to do. <laughs> Try to help you. <laughs> I have to say that Dan Renica has just made this tournament what we've had today. Wonderful people, wonderful time, a wonderful, wonderful group of, of, of people on the committee. You know, they all did such a great, great job. And this, I think, is the finest tournament that we've ever had. Dan, you've done a great job. And Lakeshore Shore Saving Thanks.